What is going on fish people? Welcome back to Aqua Malik. Today's gonna be a really fun video. We're gonna be looking at how I'm feeding my zebra pleco fry from day one till they're three months old, so about 12 weeks. You can follow this routine until they're about five, six months or even longer. Just increase the different types of food that you're gonna be feeding them over time. So after three months, you can add a couple more different types of food and we will look at that as the time comes. So subscribe and hit that notification so you do not miss out on those videos as well as all the other cool videos that I am bringing to you through this channel. The next thing we're gonna be doing after this video series for Zebra Playcos is kind of completed, which is at the end of it now because I've actually gone from getting the fish to conditioning the fish, setting up your groups and breeding breeding triggers, the importance of pH, and all these other factors. I'll put a link to the playlist right here, right up there, so you guys can check out that entire playlist and figure out exactly what I do to get my fish to breed and exactly how I get to this level uh, of success. Produced by Malik. The next thing is I actually also have a day one to day 10 feeding instruction. Now that video is quite important. I really recommend you guys check that out as well because day one to day 10, you need to get them eating as soon as possible onto some really good food and growing fast so that you can get significant growth out of your fish. My fish right now are about nine weeks old and the, most of them are over two, two centimeters and there's some that are almost two and a half centimeters. They're, they're growing really fast. So two months, two centimeters is really good growth. That is what a lot of the master breeders out there are getting, like some of the big names in Playcos, you know, like the people I look up to. So I'm kind of happy that I'm getting similar results with my regime as a lot of these high-end uh, master breeders and uh, big name Playco breeders out there. Now having said that, if your fish are not growing as fast as these, that is completely normal. This level of growth is not actually normal. You want to have your fish grow slow and steady to be a healthy fish. So you, like I mean, a fast growth is desirable, but you also want to have the fish growing healthily. So pay attention to the fish's growth overall as opposed to how big they're getting because these are not fast growing fish. Also another thing I want to add is as the fish gets to a specific size, you know, like two to three months old, they do slow down in their growth. They're not going to start, they're not going to continue to grow longer. At about two, two months or so, they're going to start putting on the width of the fish. I mean, it's a slow process. It happens throughout the fish's life, but it's going to slow down significantly as the fish gets bigger and bigger. So, you know, you can't expect the fish to be growing this fast indefinitely for the but the first few months you it is a good idea to get them growing fast because that is a time when they are growing really fast themselves and, and they can actually sustain that growth so this video is going to cover exactly what i do personally to get that growth out of them now uh things are a little chaotic in my facility right now i have both of my dogs with me and my male dog uh, is here and he needs to drink his medicine every 12 hours or so he has an allergy medication he also he has to eat special food and he needs to be walked several more times a day. So I am actually on a really weird schedule right now where I had to wake up every six hours or so to, to take them out. So what I've been doing is I've been doing two shifts. I've been staying up for six hours, uh, seven hours or so, taking care of the dogs, sleeping for about four hours, waking up again and taking care of the dogs again. And then, you know, doing a night shift for about night, next six, eight hours or so and getting all this stuff done. And uh, so it's a little off with my schedule. It's like 10.30 at night and I just finished cleaning some tanks and I haven't fed the fish yet. I haven't fed the dogs yet and uh, I'm making this video quickly for you guys so uh, I can get this done. But things are a little chaotic with uh, my situation right now because of the dogs and the puppies are due in about two and a half months if everything goes well. If you guys are interested, comment below and let me know and I'll make a separate video about that. But there has to be enough comments and requests about seeing the puppies and the dogs themselves because uh, the last few videos I made about the dogs did not get a lot of traction. So um, for me to put the effort and you guys to not watch the video, it's kind of, you know, it doesn't feel so good to me. But the last few videos I did, you guys really enjoyed. So if you haven't seen them, there's a Playco Fry harvesting video where I harvested the L340 Select Fry. There's some magnificent fry in that video as well. So highly recommend checking that out. I'll put a link to it up here. And uh, so yeah, let's get into this video and uh, figure out exactly what I feed my fish. 
So the first thing I'm gonna say is I think I talked about these foods in the last video as well. Uh, not a paid advertisement. I am friends with the manufacturer of this food. Uh, they don't give me any of this for free. I can't even buy this half of the time because it's not available in my region. So I have been resorted to uh, uh, resorting to contacting the manufacturer directly who is a friend and uh, buying these directly from them as opposed to having to uh, wait till they are restocked in, in my region. Now uh, these ones I've actually bought about two years ago and uh, they're still full. Just to show you an idea of how much food is required, that is two years of feeding all my high ancestors fry. So you don't need to use a lot of this stuff to feed your fry. Now um, what I do with Zebs for example is I would feed this stuff pretty much every single day and this one which is the spirulina paste every second or third day so twice a day on this and uh, you know once every two days on this okay for zebra placos the first thing you want to consider is they're a carnivorous animal or at least when they're younger they're pretty much a hyper carnivore they don't eat a lot of vegetable content throughout their lifetime but this is very true when they're smaller now this is not the case with other hypansexual species so depending on the species you're working with you might have to tweak your diet a little bit based on the specific fish's requirement but for this particular species of fish they do not eat a lot of vegetable content so you don't have to worry about feeding green beans or anything like that please don't because the fish is not going to eat it and if it does it's going to have bloat and it will usually end up dying so this is one of the main reasons people end up killing their fry is they feed them things that, that are not palatable to the fish. The first food we're going to look at is I think I didn't cover this food in the last video because I don't personally feed this particular food to my hype ancestors fry anymore. Uh, not, not, not on a regular basis at least. Uh, and the food is baby brine shrimp. Live newly hatched baby brine shrimp and this is a great food for your hype ancestors fry and I, I have really good success with them I actually fed some of my hype ancestors some live baby brine shrimp today because I had a lot of extra because I, that I hatched yesterday so uh, they were still alive and uh, I washed them really clean and I, I did feed some of my hype ancestors fry including the older zebra placo fry but the thing I have to stress when you are feeding baby brine shrimp is you cannot put any shells in the tank if the fry eats the shells they will catch blockages and they can die and I've killed fry this way in the past I've killed probably five or six zebra fry alone by feeding um, live baby brine shrimp because they, they end up eating the shells and I'm lazy sometimes to take out individual shells and I just siphon out a bunch and I just throw it in there there's five or six shells and one, one fish or two fish eat all the shells and they die so this has happened to me in the past and that's one of the reasons why I stay away from live newly hatched baby brine shrimp for my hype ancestors fry. Now having said that, you can feed live baby brine shrimp. At least for the first 30 days, they do get significant growth. But as they get to about four week mark, they, they slow down growing. And if you continue to only feed live baby brine shrimp, your fish will not grow anymore after about three to four weeks and they will suffocate, slowly end up starving and dying off because they're not getting all the nutritional content that this fish might require to grow into a healthy adult. Now, having said that, the first food I like to personally feed are these foods here. These foods are from Evo Aquaristic, not a paid advertisement. The manufacturer is a friend of mine and uh, I do buy this stuff from a regional distributor, well, at least these two containers I bought almost two years ago. And uh, just to show you how much I've used, I've, I've used this less than half, almost half, you can see, see? I don't know if you can see that, but basically you don't need a lot of this stuff. You need a really small amount. I'll actually make a ball for my, my two fry boxes and I will feed them and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to feed my fish today. Now these two foods I are basically my staple food for all my high ancestors fry. Uh, pretty much everybody gets this twice a day and this every other day one time. So three times this, one time this in two days, okay? Now uh, the amounts... I mean that's up to you guys, the fish, you cannot overfeed your fish uh, when they're this small. If they are going to get bloated and stuff, it's other factors, water conditions, there's other things that could factor in. So don't worry too much, but also don't like put too much more than the fish can eat within a specific period of time because this stuff can follow your water really fast and that's one of the reasons, other reasons you can kill your fish is by having dirty water. 
I really want to add this one uh, one detail here that is I personally at least have not had great success moving the fry out of the parent tank into other tanks. What I mean by that is if they were born in this tank and I take them out of here and I move the same fry into a tank beside them for example um, before they're like at this size range then uh, they don't seem to do well for me. So small fry within the first two weeks or so I like to keep them in the parent tank because if I move them, usually they end up developing diseases or uh, bacterial internal issues like bloat and other stuff like that. So I've had this problem with other fish as well, with other hypocestrus. So for me, I like to keep them in the parent tank uh, for as long as possible because I believe that it has something to do with the fish getting beneficial bacteria into their stomachs from the parent fish. So this is, I think for me it's important. I've had uh, quite good success with this method, so this is why I'm gonna add that there. Other people, I don't know what their success rates are, but for the most part, everybody else I know as well that has considerable success, usually keeps their fry in the same tank they were born in for the first few weeks. So that's something to consider. And then you can feed this stuff to start them off from day one onwards. And uh, we have covered the importance of an oak leaf and stuff. Link is up there so you guys can check out the first 10 days feeding and uh, figure out exactly what I do to get them through the first 10 days. After the first 10 days or so, you can continue to feed the same foods, but I do like to add other things onto their menu. One of the things I really like adding is actually Dr. Basilier's. This is uh, not a paid advertisement again. This is just my container that I keep my Dr. Basilier in. I have a big bottle and I just pour some into here and uh, so that way it doesn't, I don't have to keep opening the giant container every time. Now uh, with Dr. Basilier, what I like to do when they're about 10 days old is I like to take, I'll actually show you guys this because I'm actually doing this right now, I have to do this for my fries. So I actually went and uh, got myself a little ball of this uh, Hypencestrus grow paste. There's a dog hair on it, let me get that out, there we go. I have dogs. <laughs> So basically what I'm doing is, uh, let's first, so that's the ball, okay, can you guys see it, yeah, it's not that big, it's quite small, I'm going to take a small portion of this for my new fry, so the new real little guys are going to get this ball, there's about five of them, so let's put that aside for now, and then this ball is what I feed my two month old fry, and I'm actually going to mix it with some Vaseline. So. Basically, I'm using this as a binder. So I'm taking a spoon, like actual spoon of basilier. This is not the spoon that basilier comes in. So the little spoon, so that's about what you would get out of the little spoon, maybe about 50 to 70 little pellets, little tiny ones. And uh, you close this properly. I don't want any spillages. There we go. And then what I do is I take the ball, I put it over the basilier food, I keep rolling it, and uh, keep doing that, keep doing that keep doing that and now you see that the ball is kind of constant getting fully covered with the basilier right so you might think okay that's cool but then what so if you keep doing this for about a minute or so it basically combines into the ball and it binds with it there's a binding agent in this food that uh, is naturally like a glue almost and uh, it sticks to everything basically especially if there's moisture but because this is dry, it doesn't stick to my hand, but it does constitute into this nice little ball of food. Now this is more than what I would feed, so you guys can see that's about a ball, maybe a half a centimeter or 0.6 millimeters uh, wide. So for my American viewers, it's about three-eighths of an inch uh, sphere. So I take this, I break it in half, and I feed one half now, okay? and one half in the morning that's it so that's what i'm doing when they're about two months old okay so that's one thing let's put this in a safe place for now uh the next thing i like to feed them is other Igbo foods at about six to seven weeks i start adding different foods to their container i've actually given these guys um bug bites about twice now uh, I gave them a little bit of this stuff. I was going to give them this today. This is the plankton tabs. So I give about a quarter tablet for 10 little fry that are two months old. Real good food. Becomes like a powder and they suck it all up. 
I also feed this stuff to other, my other Hype Ancestors Fry. So basically the same food, okay? Every other day, I also like to feed them sp some spirulina paste. Same routine though, I mix other food into this. One of the really cool foods I like personally mixing is golden pearls. This is the 230-300 microns. It has 60% protein and 28% uh, fat. So 60% protein and 8% fat. And it's a really good food. And uh, it's made out of mostly brine shrimp, squid, shrimp and fish protein, animal protein, purified fish oils, phosphaloids, asanthane, vitamins, minerals, and immunostimulants. So there is no garbage fillers in here. This is pure protein food and uh, I really like feeding this stuff. Mostly for my baby angels and stuff, but for my Playco Fry, I do like to mix a little bit of this stuff into some of these foods as well. Now, there are other foods that you can use. There are other foods in the market that you can use like uh, Rapashi is a really good solution. Now my friend uh, is having great success with it. But the one thing he actually, we were just on the phone, it was about a 40 minute phone call in between the video. So this is about 40 minutes later now. And uh, so I was on the phone with him for about 40 minutes talking about baby Playcos and stuff like that. He's another Zebra Playco breeder. And uh, basically we were saying, he was saying with the Ripashi, he does not get the growth for the first two months that I have been getting with the Ebo food. So we are now looking at getting more Ebo food for our fry. And uh, switching over, he's also going to switch over from Rapashi into Ebo because it has more um, extensively higher success rate for growth. Now, having said that, after about two to three months as the fish matures, the growth does slow down. So you cannot expect this significant rate of growth indefinitely, okay? The fish is not going to continue to grow to six centimeters in six months this way because at this rate, they should, right? But it doesn't work like that because the fish also now starts growing wider and stuff. And so you will see a difference in size, but it will be gradually slowed down. Uh, and uh, a good size for a six month fish is about four centimeters. So if you can get them to double si in size b b from two centimeters to four centimeters in the next four months, you are doing great. If you can get them to about 3.5 centimeters in six months, or even 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters, you're still on a good level. Uh, that's pretty much what a standard growth is about one and a half like an inch or so in about six months anything less is you know like a little bit worrisome but I still wouldn't worry if the fish is three quarters of an inch at five to six months you're still doing okay okay but if it's not growing to that size in six months then you might want to up on the feeding um, and uh, little fry do not have an issue with overeating you can feed them a lot and uh, I usually have food in here indefinitely there's, and I don't clean these, I'm pretty sure you guys know this by now, but I'll put some B-roll of that, of some of my other fry rings as well. There, there's a lot of mom in there, it's about a half inch layer in some of the fry rings. This one has, the whole back is covered with mom. And uh, so then they are hungry, they go and eat it. Uh, the one thing you want to consider is you want to have the fry off the ground and off the mom. They can be swimming around in the mom indefinitely, which is not healthy for them. So having something like a little platform in this case I have little caves little you know things like that where they kind of have an area where they hang out and there's no mom so that's all you need and then the back of the, the fry ring or one corner of the fry ring could have a nice thick layer of uh, you know debris and mom and other stuff like broken down oak leaves and stuff like that and they do eat that biofilm off of those things so that is quite beneficial to them so it's a it's a it's a, a little bit of a balancing act um, you have to know when you should be cleaning it and uh, for me it's basically instinctual if I look at them and if it feels like the fish are swimming in their own crap I definitely clean it but as long as they have an area where they're not in crap I don't so that's basically what I like to do and I don't suffer any losses in this process so I mean I'm not too worried about anything because I mean the water is clean in the tank everything else is good it's just the fry ring itself has a little bit of detritus and debris and uh, I find that with Playco Fry especially, they are detritivores when they're small. So they do like to eat the biofilm and other stuff like that. So this type of stuff is not bad. But the one thing you do want to make sure is there's no rotting food. So nothing decomposing, creating little fuss balls and fungus and stuff because that stuff can get onto your fries and it can infect them and they could get fin rot and other issues and they can die. So really make sure there's no decompos decomposing food 
but decomposing vegeta vegetable matter like leaves, uh, oak leaves and stuff like that, um, you know, like a small amount of mom, it doesn't seem to be detrimental at all. It's actually beneficial for the fish and it's quite healthy. So that's something to pay attention to. And uh, any leftover food like pellets and stuff that you might put in there that hasn't been eaten, you want to remove it within a few hours. So that's something to pay attention to. What I personally like to do is I like to have some snails in there. You are feeding the snails because they will come and eat all your playco food. But the chances are that's going to keep your container free of any de decaying food matter. Okay. So having some snails or some shrimp is quite beneficial. So based on what you have, either snails or shrimp, you might want to add that in there. Aside from that, there's not much more that I want to add to this video. I don't want to make it too long or whatever. Just so want to keep it concise, but also all the details that I, I think are important. And uh, so we'll put some b-rolls of me feeding them and stuff, and you guys can see the fry ring, and I'll show you some of the fry rings throughout the video as well as right here, so you guys can see it. And uh, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please comment below and let me know. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now and hit that notification icon so you do not miss out on all these cool videos that I'm bringing to you through this channel. As always, thank you so much for your love and support. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all.